Have you ever wondered what people mean when they say that someone sounds posh? If you do know what it means, do you wish to add some poshness to your English? Or do you want to better differentiate between posh English and standard English so that you don't mix them up? If you identify with any of these questions, watch this lesson until the end so that you understand and maybe use the posh English that some British people use. Before we get into the lesson, in case you're new here, I want to let you know that every week we bring you three free new lessons to help you understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without subtitles. Just like Swati who says that they've increased their English knowledge and confidence with our channel. So if that's something you'd like to achieve, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss a single one of our new lessons. So here's some general information. More than just a feature of language, posh is associated with the upper class related to having or spending money. Posh people in Britain use words that maybe the general population would not normally use and their pronunciation also changes. Take a look at these sentences with the word posh that a use of Urban Dictionary shared. This will give you an idea of the cultural significance of this word. She looks really posh with that new pearl necklace. Have you seen her beautiful bone china tea set? It's really posh. She must be quite posh to have sent her children to Eton. She talks quite posh. In this lesson, we'll focus on words that will make you sound posh and sophisticated and also help you understand posh English. So if you want to boost your language level, then this lesson is definitely for you. We're using clips from Bridgerton, Downton Abbey and The Crown to give you real examples with these words. You may want to sound posh in certain situations at work, university or social gatherings, but even if you don't want to speak this way, you might want to understand it as it's part of British culture. For example, you could hear an English person speak posh as a joke. We do love to experiment with different accents. Besides that, it's always good to have an idea of the difference between posh English and casual English so that you don't say something posh if you're hanging out with friends, for example. So imagine you're going to Surrey as an exchange student and your host family are the Spencers, a classic posh upper class family. A few things you might notice in conversing with the members of this upper crust family is they'd use very, so and really less frequently. Instead, you'll hear rather as in, for example, it's a rather difficult question or as in to rather like something. I don't know this one. Actually, I rather like it. You could also hear this word at the end of a sentence to correct a misstatement or emphasise a point. I suppose it does put the pressure on them, rather. On who, ma'am? The Prince and Princess of Wales and their forthcoming tour. Other words that are used to emphasise an idea are quite, fairly, utterly, awfully and jolly. Next time I'm coming with you. So I have to be a next time? Yes. Just one more and I'm fairly sure you're going to enjoy it. Notice that even though awful generally has a negative meaning, when you say it as awfully to add emphasis, it generally has a positive meaning. In the following example, both utterly and awfully are used. Another rather posh sounding word in this example is indeed. She knows everything about everyone, even the queen, and yet we have her utterly convinced that we are mad for each other. We are awfully clever. Indeed we are. In our Fluent with Friends course, we'll teach you important vocabulary just like this to help you avoid making mistakes. Of course, in addition to learning thousands of words we really use in our everyday speech, understanding how natives really speak, using correct pronunciation and laughing along with all the jokes. So you can try that absolutely free with our three-part masterclass. You can learn more and sign up by clicking up here or in the description below. Let's move on to some of the adjectives that posh people like to use. 
Imagine it's 5 p.m., you're still at the Spencer house in Surrey, and Mrs. Spencer asks you, darling, do you fancy a cup of tea? Can you guess what would be an appropriate posh reply to that? Awesome, splendid, sounds good. Splendid is a typical posh adjective. You could say that's a splendid idea or simply splendid if you like what someone else said. That was a splendid luncheon. This is our research and development area. People also love the adjective marvellous. So after you've had dinner with the Spencers, you could say dinner was marvellous. Take a look at this example from Downton Abbey, where they use a couple of adjectives common in posh talk. Do look at Mr. Mosley's display. He's worked so hard. Rather marvellous, aren't they? Lovely. Well done, Mr. Mosley. Thank you, my lady. I think everyone needs to be congratulated. It's splendid. In this clip we just saw, there's another common feature, which is adding do before a verb. So they'll say... Lady Bridgerton, do join us. Mr. Murray, I'd love you to see you. Do come in. Back to some adjectives. As you're still hanging out with the Spencers, you might be invited to a ball. Actually, a ball, which is a large social occasion where people dance, are more a thing of the past. However, if you do get invited to a ball, you can say afterwards, the ball was stupendous. Let's now move on to some posh slang. These are words that you can use in more informal situations. The first one is jolly. We mentioned this one as a synonym of very, but also if you're jolly, you're happy and enjoying yourself. Edith seems jolly tonight. I'll order ice cream and a glass of champagne and we'll be as jolly as you like. When something is nonsense, meaning ideas, opinions, statements, etc. that are not true or that seem very stupid, you may use a funny slang word, poppycock. I have some things I'd like to discuss, too. Would you like to go first? Make a nice change. What does that mean? It means you always go first. You're not poppycock. You're the Prince of Wales. You're born to go first. The next slang word is bugger. This is an offensive word for someone who is very annoying or unpleasant. Example, he's such a bugger. You can bugger it when you are annoyed or angry or tell someone to bugger off, which means to go away or leave a place. I've got an appointment with my new private secretary. Oh, God, tell him to bugger off. I can't do that. Dining room to kitchen. Dining room to kitchen. Dining room to kitchen. Oh, bugger it. Right, check the circuits and up the amplitude of the fuse wire. This is a slightly less offensive way of telling someone to leave you alone without using a strong curse word. You've probably heard this one in many famous British films such as Love Actually and Notting Hill. Our next slang word is golly, which people use to show surprise. What do you have to say about that? I'd like to. Goodness! Oh, well... Why not? Golly, life is full of surprises. <laughs> and because British people love to talk about the weather, you can say something like, what ghastly weather, which means what terrible weather. I imagine you've heard what's happened. Yes. Terrible thing. Awful. Ghastly for your parents. The fact is, this family is responsible for the whole ghastly debacle. When you're in Surrey, you might make friends with a group of chaps, or you might date a nice chap. Chap is another way to say man. And did you tell him why? Certainly not. But he trusts me. He's a faithful little chap. 
Who is this fellow, anyway? Simon Bricker. Just a chap I know. Twit is an insult, which means stupid. He won't learn a thing about himself at Eden. Well, yes, but he might just survive, or he might flourish. Or he might just become another wet namby-pamby mollycon twit, like the rest of the British upper classes. So, to recap what you've learned in this lesson, British poshness is associated with the upper class. For that reason, it's not the most likely English you'll hear when visiting the UK, but this is language that people do like to use. I also taught you these posh words that you can use not only with the intention to sound posh, but sometimes even when you want to sound a bit more sophisticated or if you're in a formal situation. With many hit series like The Crown, Downton Abbey and Bridgerton to name a few that depict the upper class, you'll be able to understand the language they use better. So if you liked this lesson, make sure you give us a like and if you'd like a lesson on one of these series that we haven't yet featured, let us know in the comments down below. Despite the bad blood, I'll have none of it on my carpet. Now for Grace's sake, nothing will go wrong. Those bastards out there on our family. What about Snar? Yeah, they're women of sports, I'll say that. No. 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 No cocaine. No cocaine. No sports. No telling fortunes. No racing. 